our Sunday school lesson for November the 6th, 2016, Lesson 10. We're coming from Unit 3, and our unit title is Alpha and Omega. Our lesson title this week is Making Things New. Our devotional reading is taken from the book of Revelations, chapter 7, verses 13 through 17. Our background scripture is Revelations 21, verses 1 through 8. And our printed passage is also the 21st chapter of Revelation, verses 1 through 8. And our lesson aim after participating in this lesson, each student should be able to identify those who escape the second death and those who do not. Contrast aspect of the old creation with those of the new creation. Identify one way to shift his or her focus from the current world to the new heaven and earth and make a plan to do so. Making things new. As we study the book of Revelation, there, there has always been fearfulness and, and confusion about for many Christians to study this book. But this book is... It's really self-explanatory, and we just have to let the Bible explain itself to us. So here in the 21st chapter of Revelations, now we're coming to the, the consummation of all things, where God is giving forth a, a prophetic vision of the things that would happen into the future as we go from this present age into eternity. We find in verse 1 of our lesson where it states, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. A new heaven and a new earth. Now of such a change in this earth, we are not to be ignorant because we have been, those who have studied God's word have seen that God has from the beginning, from after he created the heavens and the earth and that sin entered into this world that God planned will not be thwarted, that, that his plans will be fulfilled. And so we can find in the writing of a uh, Isaiah, Isaiah 65 and 17 states, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. Also, in Isaiah 66, verse 22, God says, For as the new heaven and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, said the Lord so shall your seed and your name remain before me. The Apostle John writing in the book of Revelation and the prophet Isaiah writing in Isaiah does not tell us how it is to come to pass, but the Apostle Peter does. For in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 and 12, where first Verse 10 states, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with firm and heat, and the earth also and the works therein shall be burnt up. Verse 12 says, Looking for and hasten unto the coming of the day of God, when the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with firming heat. So now here we can see where God is bringing the past, where the consummation of God's promise to restore the earth. See, God's plan will not be 
daughters, regardless of how sin came into the world, that that God's purpose will be done. And God's purpose was to create a, a earth and, and man so that he can, out of his love, bestow his love upon man and have fellowship with him. But when sin entered into the picture, God cannot have fellowship with sin, and he refuses to have fellowship with sin. But he will start things of new. We find in verse 1 where it's also said that and there was, and there was no more sea. No more sea. Not that there should not be large bodies of water. For we have to remember that the river that flows through the sea through, through the streets of the new city must have an outlet, but there shall be no great oceans, no great bodies of water. And so John in his vision in verse 2 says, I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. The holy city, the new Jerusalem. Now we have to understand that there is not only to be a new heaven and a new earth, but there is to be a new city. The city, this very city, the new Jerusalem is the city in the place where Jesus said that he was going away to heaven to prepare a place for his bride. In John the 14th chapter, he said, You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. But I go a way to prepare a place that there where I am, you shall be also. So Jesus is preparing right now a place for the believers to dwell in. And then in Revelation 21, we see where this finished city that he has prepared is coming down to the new heaven and the new earth. That God will create a new heaven and a new earth where, where all the traces of sin and disobedience has been desired. We find it in verse 3 where it says that, And I heard a great voice out of the heavens saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. The tabernacle of God is with men. The dwelling place. This means that heaven shall has come down to earth and that this earth will become the very residence of God. We remember how that in the first chapter in, in the book of Genesis in, in, in the garden, how that, how that God would come down in the cool of the evening and how that he would fellowship with God with Adam, how that he wanted a relationship with Adam, but because of sin, that fellowship was broken. But God, in his great love for man, that God will make in the future, after he get rid of sin from the very universe, that, that God will make his very residence, residence with man, and that, and, and that he will dwell among men. And also it said that 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 he then that God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away. In this life we have to endure and suffer so many sorrows, whether we are so-called good people or bad people. That is just part of the curse of sin. We lose loved ones. 
we have tragedies, we have sickness and illness, and and sometimes it seems like that the more that an individual try to live right, try to do what is right, try to live for God, it seems like the more problems and tragedies that he has, the heartache of having kids that are are, are born to parents who are deformed and ill, the of the loss of loved ones and in accidents, the loss of young people that who who are hooked on drugs and and who are murdered, the the anxiety of of losing your homes and because there there is no job and and, and your income has diminished, all these sorrows and and, and, and all these heartaches. One day it says that the Bible says right here that God Himself that he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And here we're seeing that in this new city, that no sorrow or travail of any kind shall enter within the walls of the city. And the cry of anguish shall never be uttered. Hearts will never be broken. No tear shall ever flow from the eyes, and most glorious of all, death shall be unknown. You know, death began when man sinned in, in the garden and was expelled from the garden. But here it ends when the final judgment condemns Satan, death, and hell when they are cast into the lake of fire. And in this new city, the new Jerusalem will be painless. It will be tearless. It will be deathless because it will be a sinless city. And the former things have passed away. And that God, that God himself will be there to comfort, to embrace, to to have compassion, and God himself will wipe away all tears from our eyes. We read in verse 5 and 6 of our lesson where it states, And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I will make all things new. And he said unto me, Write. For these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give unto him that is of thirst of the fountain of water life freely. He that sat upon the throne, that is, that God here is speaking, and he says, and that the truth and the certainty of the blessed that was stated or ratified by the very word and promise of God. For it was necessary for the apostle to write this down. Why? Because this was not immediately come to pass for many ages must pass between the time when this vision was given to John and to the completion of it. Therefore, God had it committed to writing for the perpetual memory and continual use to his people, to encourage us to, to one day, even in spite of the circumstances that we can look to and hold on and, and and be anchored to the word of God. For Psalms 119 and verse 160 states, Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. That God's word is true. And, and that is a guarantee to all mankind who trust in this word. For he said that the heaven and earth will pass away be, be before his word. So we have to stand and put our hope on God's word and, and trust 
in his word. Not, not in the word of man, but in the word of God. Be, because God is faithful, okay? And then not only to prove his faithfulness, God gives us his titles, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Think of this. As his power and will were the first cause of all things, God said, let there be. The earth came into existence because God desired it to be, because he willed it to be. And then so he caused these things, and his pleasure and his glory are the last, and he will not lose his purpose. God has a purpose, and God's purpose will not be will not be stopped or hindered by anything or anyone. And so the counsel of God shall stand, and he will do all his pleasures. He will do all his desires. Why? Because he is the beginning and the end, and besides him, there is no other. He is all-powerful. And so whatever he desires to do, God is able to do that. And then so we find also it talks about how that he says that I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. The fountain of the water of life freely. This is all by grace, the free gift of God. Everything, even from the very beginning of creation, it was all by God's grace. God created the heavens and the earth. God created man and woman. God placed man and woman in the garden that he had created. Man did not earn or deserve anything, but it was all by God's unmerited favor. And so even even with us today, salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ is, is not by works. We don't earn it or we deserve it, but it is by grace. For by grace are we saved through faith. And it is a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So none of us have anything that we can boast about, but God is the one. It is freely given to all mankind by God. And so here this fountain of living water, the water of life, which will be free, which will be flowing in the new Jerusalem, it is the free gift of God. We read in Isaiah 55 and 1 stating for even for salvation it said, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters and he that have no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. God states that salvation, th those who thirst, those, those who, who long for righteousness, those who long for, for, for God and, and, and to walk in his way, come, that, that he will fulfill that need. Don't you know man ha has a need to, that he's his soul, he don't understand it, but his soul thirsts for God. And, and and that thirst will never be quenched until we come the way that God wants us to come. And that way to God is only one way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. And no man coming to the Father except by me. For Jesus stated in the Gospel of John chapter 7, verses 37 and 38, saying, If any man thirst." Let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on the me, as the scriptures has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. 
So here we see that God is bringing things to a consummation that and that his will will be done. And that in spite of all the tragedies that we read in the first part of the book of Revelation, because that reveals that though God is love and God is merciful, but God is also a holy God and a God of wrath. And, and, and that God's wrath is being poured out on this rejecting world, the, the world that rejected him and his son and those that accepted Satan and, and the things of this world. And so, and, and, and so we see God's wrath, but after that, that God is going to purpose will be fulfilled, that he will create a new heaven and a new earth that, that he is building for his people. Okay, and, and and so we see that, and, and so we find it in verse 7 of the lesson, it says that, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. He that overcometh. This recalls the promises at the close of each of the seven letters to the uh, churches in chapter 2 and 3 of Revelation. But this also talks about how Jesus says to his saints in John 16, 33, saying, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In this world you shall have tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And then we find in 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 First John, the fifth chapter, verses four and five, that assures us as the body of Christ that those who have put their faith in Jesus Christ, where it says that. For whatsoever is born to God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcomes the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. And it says that, and they, God says, and they, and he shall be my son. And so we find out in John the first chapter where it says for talking about Jesus for many that believers upon him to them gave them power to become the children of God. That we are the children of God. That that we are the heirs of God. That we are joint heirs with Christ. And and the scripture tells us it does not Behold, what manner of love is this, that the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God, or the sons and daughters of God. It does not yet appear but what we shall be, but we know that when he appeared, talking about Jesus, that we shall be just like him. So for the church, the, the Christian, the day Christian, we don't have to fear about what goes on in the book of Revelation. Because in chapter 21, it, it states the rejoicing of the new creation and the new earth. But understand this, that we as the body of Christ, we will not, the church will not go through the tribulation. Christ will take his church out of the tribulation. And that, and, and that we will not endure with that seven year period where God's wrath, where he would turn upon man and his wrath will be exemplified and it will not be withheld from his fury. And so and so we see that in verse 8 it talks about how that he makes an example. In verse 7 he's talking about he that overcometh shall inherit all things and I will be his God and 
and he will be my son. But and then in verse 8, it says, But the fearful and unbelieving, the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. The fearful, who they were who would not admit into this blessed world. He now states explicitly who would not. He said the fearful. The, the fearful denotes those who who uh, who was boldly not to possess principles, who were afraid to avow themselves as the friends of God in a wicked world. The unbelieving, those who have not true faith, avowed infidels, infidels at heart, unbelievers, and all who have not the serious faith of the gospel. The abominable. That is, that means to those who feel disgust at to abominate of heart, and hence the principle, the abominable, refers to all who are detestable on account of their sins, all whose conduct is offensive to God. Thus it is concluded that those who live in open sin, those who practice detestable vices, who conduct is suited to excite disgust. These most of all will be excluded from a pure and holy world. And then we talked about how the murderers will be excluded. Whoremongers will be excluded. Sorcerers will be excluded. Idolaters will be excluded. And all liars, all who are false in their statements, their promises, these will be excluded. The words would embrace all who are false towards God. Those who say, yes, I believe in, in him, but this, their hearts are far from him. And all false towards God and false towards human beings. He says that all shall have their part in the lake which burned with fire and brimstone. A punishment that will never, never quench. A fire that will never, never go out. And that they will be excluded from heaven and the new earth and that they will be punished forever. That they will be eternally separated from God which is the called the second death. So we as Christians those who believe in Jesus Christ we have nothing to fear from the book of Revelation, but we can rejoice looking forward to to the very day that God himself, that he will make his tabernacle among men, that, that we will be able to dwell with him and fellowship with him, that we will be his sons and daughters in, in, in a new relationship, that 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 these old sinful bodies and, and, and these old sinful inclinations and natures that we have will be taken away and that one day we will be able to dwell through all eternity in love and peace with Christ Jesus and our Heavenly Father making all things new. May God bless you and keep you.